I'm gonna give you some tips for Achieve Homework 2. The first five problems on this homework assignment are multi-step synthesis problems. These problems will be review of material that we covered in 241, chapter 7, 8, and 9, and also some of the material that we learned in chapter 10 this quarter. So it's gonna be a little bit of everything. The first problem on here, which is just asking you to draw the intermediate compounds that are being formed in this multi-step reaction. These are um, all of the, the reactions for this particular synthesis are coming from the alkyne chapter, which is chapter nine. So if you're stuck on this one, look at your chapter nine, your alkyne chapter, that's where you'll find these reactions. Um, this is a multi-step reaction, uh, multi-step synthesis. This is going to involve reactions uh, for from alkene chapter eight, as well as alkyne chapter nine. The first thing that I notice when I look at this problem, and hopefully the first thing you notice as well, is that we are adding a carbon to the to the carbon chain coming off of that, that six numbered ring. So you are going to need to do a reaction that's gonna add a carbon to this molecule. And so far, you've only learned one way to increase the length of a carbon chain. And that one reaction was covered in chapter nine, the alkyne chapter. So you know for sure that you're going to need to um, at least start by looking there and in, in chapter nine and look at how to increase that carbon chain. Question number three, this reaction is also an alkyne reaction. So this is coming out of chapter nine. I would suggest if you're kind of stuck on this one, it can be a little bit tricky um, when you're being given a, a specific list of reagents to choose from. Um, it, these problems, I personally think these problems are easy when they're easier, when they're just open-ended and they're not restricting you to these, these very specific lists. Did not mean to choose that. Um, but this is an alkyne reaction. So if you're stuck on this, I would suggest looking at the alkyne chapter and looking at what you can do if you're starting with a dichloro or a dihalogen like we have here? What are your options? Uh, here's a multi-step reaction. Now, one thing that's a little bit different for the layout of this one compared to ones like this that we did last week, uh, Achieve is providing you with the structure of the starting material and the structure of the product, and it's asking you to start with the, the reagent, just filling in the reagent. So ones that we did last week, the first empty box was asking you to put in the structure of the reactant and the last box was asking you to put the structure of the product, but we don't have this here. So this is a problem that's gonna combine stuff we've learned this quarter with stuff we learned from previous quarters. And the first thing that I notice when I look at this problem is that our starting material, ethane, has no functionality on it at all. When you're starting with a molecule that has no functionality, you have to start with a radical halogenation. You've got to put that halide on there so that you have, a, in this case, we have a leaving group, You've got something that you can work with. Notice that we're not changing the carbon skeleton. We're just trying to create a carbon-carbon triple bond. Um, and typically what that means and kind of what I want you to think about when we're working towards something like that is that we're just going to be doing a series, usually, a series of eliminations and additions. Try to get that, that um, bromine off, put something else on in its place, take that off, put something else on. So you're just kind of going back and forth, back and forth until you finally get the product that you want. And then last but not least, you have one more, this one. Obviously this is gonna be coming from your alkyne chapter because you're starting with an alkyne. Uh, it, this does kind of look a little bit tricky, but there is no change to the carbon skeleton. We started with three carbons, we're ending with three carbons, so you can totally do this. Um, just three steps. And I think my suggestion with uh, one like this would be that maybe you just kind of think about all, look at the list of reagents that you have here for step number one, and maybe look at like, kind of rule out which of these are not even reasonable reagents to use on an alkyne, which of these would not even do anything with an alkyne. Just kind of start narrowing it down from there and see what you can do. Uh, now we're gonna be getting into the problems pertaining to alcohols. This first one is just asking you to draw the structure of this particular molecule. Notice that we have numbers in the middle of the name. So that four ene to all notation, the ene, of course, is telling us that we have an alkene that's starting on carbon number four. 
The all is telling us that it's an alcohol and the alcohol functional group is located on carbon number two. Um, here's a pretty tricky one. It's just asking you to pick the name of the molecule, um, the name that makes the most sense. And remember that we're looking for the longest possible chain of carbons. Uh, we have two of these are decanol. So two of them would have a, a 10 carbon chain. Nonenol, that would be a nine carbon chain. And undecane, that would be an 11 carbon chain, if you can find that. Um, so if you can find the longest carbon chain and it's, and it's 10 carbons, then you've got your answer narrowed down to two. Uh, and then you would go from there. Keep in mind when we're, we're doing this that when we have an alcohol, the alcohol is the high priority. So our goal would be to give the OH group of the alcohol the smallest possible number. And all of the other substituents numbers would just be uh, based on where they happen to fall. But our priority would be to give the alcohol, the OH group, the smallest possible number. Here we're looking at drawing two different alkenes. This is two different alkenes that can form this alcohol via acid catalyzed hydration that don't require a rearrangement. And so this would be a reaction uh, where we're starting with an alkene and we're just adding an OH group through an addition reaction like we learned in chapter eight. Now we know that the, um, the location of the OH group, so this carbon right here, this carbon atom needs to be, because it says no, not require a rearrangement, this carbon atom is in our original material. This is one of the carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond. This carbon right here has to be part of the double bond. And because there's no, rear, no rearrangement, the second carbon of the double bond is either going to be this guy or this guy or this guy. Uh, so the double bond is either going to be located here or it's going to be located here or hopefully you get the idea and it says there are two different alkenes which means even though there are three possible spots for the double bond to go only two of those spots are unique and you're going to draw both of them both of those alkenes in that little box and moving on um, here's an sn2 reaction which you learned in chapter seven so this is just review adding curved arrows to show the SN2 reaction. Remember SN2 reactions have two curved arrows and make sure that you're using the double headed curved arrow, not the single headed curved arrow. Um, here is, now we're getting into um, reactions that form alcohols. Don't worry about it's calling this an alkenone. That's just the name of this reactant molecule that you have over here that you're working with. So it's just asking you to draw the product of this reaction. This is gonna be one of the reactions that we're learning in chapter 12. Naming this molecule, this is a diol. Remember the one, or one thing I want you to keep in mind when we're naming diols or di anything like diene or whatever, we do not drop the final E from the name of the molecule. So we don't drop the final E for a dye anything. And when I'm talking about the final E, this is a, the base molecule here is a cyclohexane. And normally when we would be adding a functional group um, to the name of this molecule, we would drop that final E and then we would put the suffix that indicated that functional group. But when our functional group is a di anything like di all, that final E does not get dropped. Why? Who knows? That's just how IUPAC wants it to be. So don't drop that final E. Um, next, we have a couple of Grignard problems and there are two parts. There's two problems and there's two parts to each problem. First, you have to predict the structure of the product. It's um, giving you, oops, it's giving you the starting material in the bro in the box and you're just going to modify this structure, which means that if you have uh, a bond that is a double bond that you need to change to a single bond, maybe it just has to be, or, oh, that did a lot. Um, yeah, there we go. Erase the bond and add whatever parts needed to be at need to be added for the Grignard reaction. And then in step two, 
it's saying, uh, are you supposed to use an H plus here or are you supposed to use an H minus here? Which one is it supposed to be? Now I wanna make it clear that in the Grignard reaction, step two is not optional. Sometimes it's H plus, sometimes it's H minus. Like I'm not 100% sure why achieve is, is, I feel like it kind of implies that you could use one or the other. Uh, when we do the Grignard reaction after step one, the intermediate looks like this. So I've added my methyl group. That's this part right here. Oh, no. Uh, I added the methyl group, which I cannot select. Oh, dear God. Everything is gone. Um, son of a gun. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna work down here on this one instead. Uh, so after the first step, sorry about that technical difficulty. After the first step of the reaction, there we go. We add the R group from the Grignard, which for this one is a CH two CH three. So there I have it added, and that oxygen is an O minus. And then for step two, our goal is to protonate that O minus oxygen. We're going to put a hydrogen on there to protonate the O minus so that it is going to become, I'm going to take the negative charge away. We're going to be adding a hydrogen, not like that. We're going to be adding a hydrogen to the oxygen. Since the oxygen is originally starting out as an O minus and opposites attract, we do not want to be coming at it with an H minus. The O minus and the H minus would not be attracted to each other. So for step two of a Grignard reaction, we're always using H plus. Sometimes it's being listed as H2O, but that H2O is just a source of H plus. We're never using H minus as step two in these reactions. This is going to be another Grignard reaction. Now with Grignard reactions, usually there is more than one combination of reagents that would give you this, uh, give you any particular product. But this one is asking you for just one combination of reagents that you could put together. You're looking for the, the ketone or the aldehyde with the Grignard. You've got to come up with both. So with these problems, we know that this carbon right here is the carbon of the carbonyl group and the oxygen is the oxygen of the carbonyl group, which means that our carbon oxygen double bond is in this spot. The Grignard reaction is going to form any one of the bonds to carbon atom to the carbon atom. So you could choose theoretically, you could choose any one of these, you could choose this to be your Grignard, or you could choose this to be your Grignard, or you could choose this to be your Grignard. Of course, the last two are identical to each other. Uh, but you don't necessarily have all of those options available to you down here in this list. So I would say, and maybe you do, maybe you have them all. So I would say, like, let's just say, maybe we're going to go with this as our Grignard, in which case you would look to see if this exists as a Grignard. If it does exist as a Grignard, you would have these three carbon atoms with the MGBR attached to the central carbon. And when I say, does it exist as a Grignard, I'm just meaning like, is it in your answer bank? Is it one of the options that you have? If it does, then you would say, okay, that's gonna be my Grignard. And that means that you want the rest of this molecule. So these parts right here, um, this, these parts over here are gonna be your ketone. And for question number 14, it's exactly the same type of thing. So you're just gonna get to practice it one more time. Now for this one, question 15, this time it's asking you to come up with two ways to make this Grignard. That means you're gonna draw or you're gonna consider both of the options. So as you know, this is gonna be your carbonyl compound right here or your carbonyl bond. And the Grignard reaction is either gonna form this bond to carbon or it's gonna form this bond to carbon. And in this problem, you're going to show both of those options. So that means you're gonna have one option where this is your Grignard and this is your starting aldehyde. And it wants you to put those in the right boxes like that. And then after you've considered that possibility, then you're gonna say, um, now I'm going to consider the other option where this is my Grignard and this is my starting aldehyde. 
And then we have a couple of reactions of alcohols. So if you're getting stuck on these, you're just going to want to look at your reactions of alcohols. Pay attention to the stereochemistry. That's really kind of the biggest deal with these problems, making sure that you're getting the chirality drawn correctly. Uh, and here is another same, same idea, reaction of an alcohol. Make sure you get the stereochemistry correct. Take a look at that kind of like that roadmap summary of all of the reactions of the chapter to help you with your stereochemistry. Um, this is a reaction of an alcohol, PCC. Um, you're just supposed to draw the product of this reaction, the CH2Cl2, that's just a solvent. So if that's confusing you, like what do I do with that? You can just ignore that. The CH2Cl2 is not always gonna be written there or sometimes it could be written as a different solvent. So that's really not, don't, don't get hung up on that CH2Cl2. The most important part is the PCC. And then this one, K2Cr2O7. I want to let you know also that that K2Cr2O7, that reagent is sometimes written as Na2Cr2O7. The most important part is the Cr2O7 um, and, that, and the acid that follows with it as well. And then last but not least, you have, uh, again, another multi-step synthesis problem. This one is going to be involving reactions from 241, so some of the reactions that you learned last quarter, with reactions from chapter 12, the alcohol chapter. So starting right off, um, the formation of compound A, that's going to be an addition reaction that you learned in chapter 8. You're going to want to go back to that. But the conversion of A to B, compound B, that's a reaction that you learned in chapter 12. Um, so you'll want to uh, look at your current stuff to help you with that one.